Hi, it's Bridget. Hi, welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here, as always, is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have a conversation, a channeling session with Chadwick Bozeman from the Afterlife. All right, so I've decided that when I am inspired to connect with someone from the Afterlife, I'm going to ask some questions that I think would be interesting to know. Instead of wasting our time with stuff that you can just Google up and find the answers to, let's focus on like the real stuff. So with Chadwick Bozeman, I would like to do just that. And I think it's very appropriate with him in particular based on the way I feel him energetically. So let's bring his energy in forward. Oh, whoa, okay. <laughs> when I connected with him a few minutes ago, he was really and a mellow and he just literally came right forward like um as like a reddish kind of long almost tunic like shirt on but it's there's no collar and he's got this black kind of jacket a little prince like <laughs> kind of but it's very um simple very simple it's not textured or anything and just like standing and just very stacked stature like a stature and like statuesque kind of coming toward me like literally feels like he's moving like a statue it literally he's like showing me um i feel like he's showing me like a wax figure is he made into a wax figure do you guys know that put it below like madame tussauds or whatever i think that's the only wax museum place right is he going to be made into like a wax figure because it literally it looks like there's this figure of him like a statue of him it might not be a wax figure it might be a statue i see it it's like like he's just like moving it toward me like on this um almost like a dolly like with wheels just kind of moving and it's just very stiff <laughs> i'm like okay it's a little creeping me out here and then he kind of pops up behind it. it's like i'm here <laughs> like okay he's funny he's a little bit of a prankster i don't know much about him from his um human life experience. I know he's an actor. I know that he was in the Disney movie. Of course, you guys know if you watch Above Life channel or if you watch me on Fairy Grasshopper, my YouTube channel, that's more like casual vlogging and intuitive stuff. You know that I love Disney. I am such a fan of that creative energy, especially the Disney parks. So I have not seen the movie Black Panther. That's probably going to surprise and shock everyone, right? But I'm kind of too cheap to uh, get Disney Plus yet, so I haven't streamed it, but I know I should, I know I should, I know I hear everybody going, oh my gosh, you need to watch it. I know, probably after this channeling, I'll do that. But his work, his body of work was far beyond just that one movie, I know. So I'm going to share with you how I feel his energy and why I'm inspired to interview him as his energy comes forward. It kind of, he kind of like wraps his energy around us in front of us like this, Kind of like how somebody would like wrap a shawl around your shoulders like grandma energy warm and fuzzy he kind of brings us in on the forward facing like in front like he's kind of pulling us in in front and he wants our attention he wants our focus so let's honor that you as you're viewing this you are an empath so you are feeling the energy and i invite you to do that feel chadwick boseman as he pulls you in or draws you in he's funny he's got a sense of humor He's, uh, you know, like a joke, kind of somebody that's going to joke around with us. Um, that's the vibe I get from him. And I also feel him as someone who I would describe him as kind of like a poet, like he's poetic and also inspired, like combination between a, um, a poet and a motivational speaker. You know, he reminds me of you guys. He reminds me of an energy that um, would be like an open mic night and he'd be like this um, rhythmic poetry, you know, uh, like performance poetry, like that, like that kind of vibe. That's how I feel. Um, he's great. And he's showing me the South, like he's showing me Georgia. Now he literally, I, he kind of shows me the South like this and I see like a peach, which is my symbol for Georgia. Yeah, I know. Easy, you guys. It's got to be simple, right? Georgia. And then he kind of pulls me over to Alabama. Wait, he pulls me over and then he pushed me down in Louisiana like Mardi Gras. And then I kind of go up to Alabama. So Georgia, Louisiana, Alabama. I'm not sure how this is significant for Chadwick's life, but Georgia, Louisiana, Alabama. And like Al uh, Louisiana, like Mardi Gras. Because right now when I'm recording this in 2021, it's actually Mardi Gras or getting close to Mardi Gras time, I believe, because it's the end of February, right? Isn't that Mardi Gras? See, I don't know that much about that stuff because I'm just not 
I'm not well versed in partying and or a world traveler like that. So, so how does he fit with Georgia, Louisiana, Alabama? I'm not sure. It feels like home. There's got to be a connection there. There's got to be home or there's got to be like a big break happening there or somebody that he cares about deeply has family there and that he shows me heart, love, I'm in love. He says um, at the time of his passing, it feels like he was married. I don't know if that's public knowledge or not. It feels like he was married and um, deeply devoted, like really appreciative. He also mentioned somebody by like, um, so I hear a name, but I feel like, so he talks about this love of his life kind of person that he's married to. And then I feel, the, then I hear a name, but I feel this like adoration love of this person. Um, but I don't think it, I don't know if it's the same person. I don't think so. Might be a mentory person. Tracy is the name. He's referring to somebody named Tracy that he looks up to that he really, there's this really, um, I admire and care deeply about, like, that's like family, like the kind of family you choose. Tracy, whoever Tracy is, put it in the comments below you guys, right? Right, so that's that. And then I want to, so I want to talk to you, um, Chadwick, I'd love to speak to you about um, inspiration as we are here in this very tumultuous time, very uh, unique time in our history, we could use some inspiration. What kinds of words of wisdom would you give us? Or maybe you can also speak into what inspires you. Mm. He says, that's a lot of different things for a lot of different people. He says, that's really a personal, he has a little bit of an, almost an accent. His dialect is a little bit different. I'm going to try not to um, mimic that. I'm trying to be very conscious of that. Um, I don't want to be. Okay. So. Show me a grandmother. I got to say something about it. It's personal. Inspiration is a personal thing. He said, it's a personal thing. It's personal. It's personal. What are you choosing? What are you choosing to look at? He's like, what are you choosing to look at? What are you choosing to see? It's a personal thing. It's a personal thing. He says, sometimes it can be painful. He says, sometimes people can get inspired through collective pain, the grief that's relevant to the times you're living in. I don't claim to know all the answers, even as an individual that you might think that I am from an afterlife perspective. It's much different than what you would envision this to be. I can say the human spirit is something that you have come to experience. That's one of the points, the key points of being human. And I recognize it's a struggle and a great deal of challenge that can be insurmountable at times. Not everyone needs to be on a big stage to get global recognition for their work to be perceived in value by others is both a blessing that leads to opportunities and it can be something that can take you off your center and put you into a place of great darkness, a place where you question if the appreciation, the rewards, the recognition is, is accurate. If it is really for you as a person or for what others perceive you to be. You see, it's really important, so important for those who are in position of power to take on this recognition, influence, and to lead by example beyond a simple statement of kindness, an act that shows or demonstrates their commitment, but more in the way in which they live, 
and the projects they choose and the products they support in the areas of their life that they put their weight behind. It's an important thing to recognize the power that you have as a person that is in the public to be aware of how you can influence. And I'm not just talking about influencing big people or big companies or, or those, in, those with money or those who have powers in addition to your own. I'm talking about the person living day to day, going to the grocery store and going to their nine to five job and waiting at the car place so they get their tire fixed. I'm talking about everybody, people, regular people. That's the most important part of what it means to be in a position, a place where you have some kind of influence or power. That's the important that's the most showing me like reaching down into the communities and actually helping at a grassroots level is what he's saying. You really feel like an activist. Like I, you guys, I'm really feeling like really the community and he's really focusing on like families and families that are broken and families that are um, the common family. He's like, look at, the, look at the common family structures and focus on the needs in the neighborhoods and He's like moving into, oh, he's moving into, I knew you were gonna move into stuff that I'm like, I don't even know how to talk about this stuff. Um, moving into neighborhoods where things are, oh, he's literally showing me, you gotta, you gotta just, he's like, are you gonna, he's like challenging me to step up. Oh, good God, okay. All right, all right, let me get a sip of tea and then we'll talk about this. The racism that is rampant, <clears throat> it's the, that's the plague. It's like, that's, he says, that's the plague. That's the plague, the racism. That's the plague. That's the toxins in the water. Why do you think Michigan, why do you think Flint doesn't have water? There's a bunch of white people that were suffering. Might be a difference made. Oh, he's really, I can feel it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, okay. What else do you have to share? Yeah, you can go there. I, I'm, He's like really making me like pushing back on me. And it's good, I should be uncomfortable. I'm a white woman of privilege, so I should be. I should be, I'm gonna hold space the damn well best I can for you. It's not just about the injustice. It's about the sheer lack of commitment. Who's showing up? Who's doing something? Who's doing something? Are you doing something? What are you like doing? Who's showing up? Who's showing up? He's saying, He's getting really, he's like, whoa, it's like, I feel this energy of like, oh, it's a combination of like what I would perceive as like a Malcolm X and a, because he's so eloquent, like articulate, um, really charismatic. And then a Martin Luther King was really conscious, conscious about how he's speaking. That's like the combination that Chadwick Boseman is bringing forward. And he's like, don't give me so much credit. Don't give me so much credit. It's like, people have to get back to their communities. They have to focus on the the toxin in the communities, the families are broken. The, it's not just the money, the opportunities aren't there. That's what's making people poor and sick and frustrated and angry. And what do you expect? What do you expect? It's like, it's got to change. It's got to be changed. It's got to continue to be difficult so that change is made. And he's like showing me again and again, don't give up. He's like, don't give up, don't give up. You have to fight. These are basic needs. These are basic needs. There should not be excuses that are made. You need to elect people that can represent your interest, that have influence for you to have power and a voice and a say, and that's how it changes. That's how it changes. And those, the people, those who have the money or the influence, social influencers, all of the different types of, he's showing me all the different types of power, the writers and the videographers and the documentarians and the scientists and the 
the, the people actually in elected positions and the musicians and the artists and the famous people and the social media influencers have got to continue to highlight the, he's like showing me like the, the plague in the neighborhoods. He's like literally showing me like toxic, it looks like toxic sludge going through the streets, like, like, um, like hazardous waste, like nuclear waste going through the streets. That like racism is that. And it's leading to a whole bunch of other things. So he's like showing me sickness and lack of medical care and um, um, higher crime rates and financial insecurity, the inability to get loans, no credit, um, um, complete uh, pay disparities and, and um, unfair treatment by landlords and housing agencies and just all sorts of, he's showing me all these things. He's like, all of these things are because of this. And you show me, you guys, it looks like literally green toxic waste pouring down the middle of the streets like its own sidewalk is what he's showing me. And that's racism. That's what he's showing me. Yep, that's what he's showing me. Mm -hmm. He's passionate. He's passionate. He's like, I'm not angry. I'm like, whoa, it's hard to say. Because <laughs> I'm presenting it, you guys. He cares so deeply about it that I'm presenting it like, I feel heat on my throat, the throat chakra communication channel going up the side of my ears. Because for me, like I said, I am like the stereotypical white privileged white woman, middle-class white woman. I mean, really? And so I feel this, I feel this like, you know, but it's not anger, you guys, is what I'm trying to tell you. He's not angry at me. Like, I don't have to back down from this and be ashamed or anything. I just have to say, okay, what do I do? What can I do? It's like, it starts inside you. You got to start seeing things for how they really are. You got to start seeing things. Then you got to start talking about it and asking some questions. And when you ask the questions, don't be worried about sounding a fool. You need to be more worried about, concerned about listening. A actually listening because you got values and beliefs and a whole bunch of structures that you don't even realize you have that are gonna be all shaken up based upon what you hear and you're not gonna to wanna to believe. It's not about, we're not asking you if you think it's true or not. We're just asking you to listen. You gotta show up and listen. You gotta shut your mouth and listen. This is powerful. Yes, it is. I hear you. I hear you. He says, you guys, he's so, God, he's such a good speaker. He says, it's not about, it's not just about, let me see if I can get it exactly. I don't know if I can get it exactly. It's not just about who you are. It's about what you do with what you are, what you have been given. And I'm talking about your skills and your gifts and all the talents and all of the things, the everything. It's so basically saying like how you show up, you know? Whoa, okay. All right, so social commentary. Wow, that's a big one, you guys. Oh my goodness, okay. I wanted to talk to you about some warm and fuzzy stuff like Encouragement for life purpose, but I guess you kind of handled that. In current events, and I guess you kind of just handled that, didn't you? Okay. Chadwick, can you give us some perspective about the afterlife itself, as in being a spirit, you know, you crossed over into the afterlife. Can you talk to us at all about the transition and then now your perspective as an afterlife spirit? Okay, so he's saying, I was in hospice care. I was in hospice care, he's saying. So my death was well planned for, he's saying well planned. <laughs> Well planned. It's a strange thing to say, but it's true. He's saying I was in hospice care. My death was well planned. And he says, I remember most of it. 
There are some times when I was asleep and I wasn't quite conscious. No, he's saying like cognizant, like his mind wasn't quite working to be able to take in from a human lens what was happening. But he says, I could feel, he says, I could feel my body dying. I knew that my body was turning off. He's explaining it like um, cooling down, like from the feet up. He said, you could tell because he said, I could tell it was, you know, that it was getting near time to go when I could feel like he said, I couldn't like really feel my legs anymore. It was kind of like everything was getting cold, cold, frozen. And then you just didn't feel it anymore like that. Like that. He said, there's no, no tingling or anything either. He said, it's not like when your arm's asleep and all of a sudden you move it and you start to, it's not like that. There's no feeling. It just seemed, first the temperature kind of seemed really cold and then it just kind of came up the body, he says. It wasn't as pain, it wasn't as painful as you might believe. It was more painful trying to live out the last few months, I'd say. He said, so the last three months were the most difficult. And I think um, that was more emotionally to see the, the weight and the burden that was, was part of our, our reality. And he's showing me like, I think it's his wife. I don't know, I don't know if they got married like right before he died or something. Cause it's like newlyweds almost like, that's the vibe I get. Okay. I mean, maybe he wanted to marry her and he didn't. Maybe that's what he's saying. I don't think that's right though. I think he got married before he died. I don't know if that, does that make sense to you guys? But I feel a sister, so I don't know if it's her sister that's helping her. And I also see like a mom or an aunt, and that's on his side. And okay, so there's two names that are coming. There's like an Esther or a Eugenia, and then there's, it's an E-U-E-A-S-E-S-T. Esther, Eugenia, Esther or Eugenia. And then there is a, can you say it again? Like a Loretta or Lorene? Not Lorraine, I don't think. It looks like a Loretta. Loretta, Loretta, I think so. I think that's what it is. I don't know if those are people that are in the afterlife that greeted him, but their family, like he's showing me arc of family and it feels like him, his mom's side is what it feels like. And then his, his wife and then her sister or sister. So it could be sister-in-law or it could be his sister is helping his wife. So he's like, they show me yellow, like a yellowy orange, which is my color for cancer. Just so you know, like when I see a body and I see that and I, that's my association with cancer. So he died of cancer. I think I know that. I think that's true, right? You guys, like I heard that. I think he had cancer. That's what I was thinking. Um, and it's cancer in the lower body. So it's an organ and it's lower is what I see. And it kind of surprising. He's like, it was surprising. It was surprise. It was surprise. But he's showing me heart something. Something's affecting his heart. So I don't know if it's his physical heart. No, yeah, physical heart, like um, something with the heart. And I don't know if medicine was affecting the heart or some kind of treatment was affecting the heart, but there was a heart thing. And then I see, okay, so no, no, here, 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 wait, 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 wait. Um, I'm feeling like the heart thing might be connected to a male that's crossed over on the other side. So like, could be a brother, a dad, an uncle, a good friend, um, a heart thing. So heart disease, a heart attack, heart something, okay? Um, somebody that has crossed over on the other side, and they may have died since he died or before, I'm not sure of the timing, I can't quite tell the timing, but I see that too. So if you know anything about that, put that below. And he's showing me a young boy, a young boy, like a godchild, a godson or a nephew, I see that, he's acknowledging that. And for some reason he says, eh, I don't know why I see this guy. I don't know if he, I don't, he doesn't feel, okay, so Chadwick Boseman does not feel to me like a comedian, but he's showing me like other comedians, somebody that looks like an Eddie Murphy, but I don't know if it's exactly Eddie Murphy, it might be somebody else, but it kind of has that, he looks like him or was well known like he was. Let's see. I'm like focusing on my mind's eye. I'm trying to kind of just stare at my computer keyboard here so that I can kind of zone out a little bit. 
Usually I look up to do that, but the light's really bright in here. The sun is coming through the windows and the tops. I can't tell who it is. It's not, it almost looks like a young Eddie Murphy or something is what it kind of looks like. Who's that? Is that like a friend of his or something? Or somebody that's like him? I don't, I'm not quite right on this. I'm not quite making the right connection. I'm not sure who this is. Somebody looks up to, African-American, somebody looks up to. Hmm. Person of color, let me say that correctly. So make sure I'm politically correct. I don't even know what politically correct means anymore. But I'll do my best, I'm willing to learn. Um, somebody singing or playing an instrument like jazz or something. I see that. Um, interesting. Because he's showing me the afterlife now. Okay, we're, we're already there. We're just slip right away. Um, it's like, he's trying to describe to me almost like I, one of the times when I was unconscious that I just didn't wake up. Like that's what happened. And then the body just slowly died and then it was done. He said, I just waited. I had to like, he's showing me like I had to stand right next to my the bed, like stand right here in the room, wait for wait for the body to totally die so that I could like unplug myself and walk out kind of a thing is what happens. He's like showing me like a cord, which I've seen before, but it's like literally showing me I got to unplug myself and walk out of the room. And he's saying like solar plexus, like his spirit into the body, unplug himself and leave, you know, that kind of thing. So transition over, yeah. But he's like, yeah, but you know, you stick around. He said, you go and check everything out, you know, see what it's like in the afterlife. Cause it's awesome. He's like, all you want to do is go there and you don't feel, he says, you gotta understand, you don't feel the separation between the life that you're unplugging from and leaving and the life you're going to. All you can feel is the good of the life you're going to, where you're going or how you're, you're changing, you know, you can feel that and that's just exciting. And, and this, this just incredible joy. So you're just drawn into this and, after that, then you come back and you, you kind of, you can kind of look out for everybody else, you know, because, you know, you want to make sure that they can feel you so that they don't feel alone. And because you make those agreements with those other souls that are in bodies to make sure that you help them through that. And so that that's natural. So how long did you stick around? He says, nine, 10 days, nine to 10 days. Showing me May for some reason. I'm not sure what May is. May 9, May 9. I'm not sure if that's a birthday, anniversary, what? May 9, May 9. That might have been a Mother's Day thing. I don't know. I don't remember when you died. I'm sorry, my friend. I know it was like in the last couple of years, but I don't know if it was during the COVID. Ooh, I just said it. During the health crisis. YouTube doesn't like it when you say that. It's too scary, apparently. Reality is too scary. Oh, but there can be other things on YouTube just fine, but you can't say that, a medical term. I know, right? The world is crazy. crazy. Okay, so interesting afterlife connection. Okay, so then you went over the afterlife. People always ask like, who did you meet? Who met you? And he's like, I just told you all about my family. I'm like, yeah, okay. So that was the priority or the vibe, yes. As far as famous people go, he shows me musicians. Like the thing he was most interested in, like if as a person, he wanted to meet like the famous musicians and stuff. Like it seems like that, like he wanted to hear the music and jam out, you know, like a Louis Armstrong and just like, I really feel the jazz, you guys. I wonder if that's Louisiana connection. Jazz, just really like kind of music and just an appreciation. I just want to go sit and just listen to good music and just you know, relax and just be. Just feel all sorts of good, you know? Yeah, I feel like he he may have died during the health epidemic because he's giving me the impression that my death was not a surprise, but it was like not the big news of the day kind of a thing. Like he's giving me the impression that it wasn't the, the big, a huge news story because there was other things going on. So I'm feeling like it was last year in 2020, so. feels in alignment, let's say that. Because you know, if you watch me as a channel, I'm a psychic and a medium and I'm also a human. And I always say to you, 
It's not about everything's right, accurate all the time. It's not about that. That's like perfection. That's like, doesn't exist. That's not re real, right? So I share with you what I pick up and sometimes I miss. Mm -hmm. But you always miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? <laughs> so cheers, at least I'm doing this particular channeling session because I mean, it's kind of sad. Like this man, Mr. Bozeman, cheers to you. You were a great talent from what I can see and sorely missed. It's like, what other things could you create, produce, do, write? Because I see you like writing. I see just so much from you. That you could do a great many things and that you've inspired a great many people. I see young people young people in the arts and young people with a chance or an opportunity. Focus on what you can, not what you can't. Focus on what you are and let that lead you to the next place for you, the next right move for you. Don't focus on what you can or what you don't have. Interesting. All right. Whew. Thank you so much, Mr. Chadwick Bozeman, for our conversation here on Above Life Channel. So before you leave, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss a new channeling video or an episode of our Sunday Morning Coffee, which is the podcast that happens on Sundays, of course. Remember the purpose here always with any conversation that we have or any video that is shared here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope because the purpose is to encourage you to live your life your best life. And this is your life after all. So you have to live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.